Hello students, welcome back to my physics channel. In this video, I am going to discuss about the circular motion in two dimensional students. So, what do you mean by circular motion? So, how it will be, uh, how we are going to discuss in two dimensional that what we are going to discuss in this class students. Okay, fine. First of all, we have to know what is circular motion first. So, what do you mean by circular motion? I will tell you one simplest statement here. Earth is in circular motion with respect to sun. So, when the earth is revolving around the sun, then the earth is in circular motion. Getting my point students? Earth is revolving itself. It rotates itself. That is called as rotatory motion. I think I hope you are catching my point. Let me go with one more example. One more example I will tell you. Listen here carefully. Suppose uh, uh, in an atom, we will be getting electrons. Those electrons are revolving around the nucleus. That is comes under circular motion. I think I hope you understand. And coming to the point one more thing, one interesting fact I will tell you. Earth is in rotatory, that is why we are getting day, uh, night, day, night like that. Why? Because it is revolving itself, it is revolving itself. Okay. Let me consider, let me tell you that, very interesting. So, earth is rotating itself, then the axis is passing like this, am I right? Let me consider it is a, what is that? North pole, south pole like this. In the axis of rotation we will say, the earth is in rotatory motion. Let me consider Chennai is the, here, Chennai, Chennai. This is what called as Chennai. So, earth is in rotatory motion, but Chennai, the place Chennai is in circular motion. Try to catch my point. Are you getting my, um, are you getting my point students? Yes or no? The Chennai will be in circular motion, not only Chennai, each and every place on the earth is in circular motion, but earth is in rotatory motion. I think, I hope you are understanding this point, okay? Okay, what do you mean by circular motion? Let me know what do you mean by circular motion. Tell me. A circular motion is a kind of motion in which, right now, the particle used to, right now, a particle or a object revolves with respect to a fixed axis, fixed axis, okay with respect to a fixed axis such that such that the axis should not pass through object through that object I don't students, this is what the definition of circular motion here. So, what do you mean by this? Very simply, I will tell you, the axis of rotation, see, you should understand one thing, whenever, whenever the uh, earth is revolving around the sun, the axis of rotation is away from the earth. So, here object is earth here, axis is away from the earth, now it is comes under circular motion. And most of the students are, uh, I mean, not understanding that the radius may not be same. Here also radius different, here also, sir. You may ask one question, students. What is that? Sir, earth is revolving around the sun in an elliptical path. No, why are you telling it is circular motion? 100% it is circular motion. 100% it is circular motion. Why? Because whatever the shape it may be, whatever the shape it may be, it may be ellipse, it may be parabola, it may be arc, it may be semicircle. Whatever the shape it may be, except a straight line, except a straight line, everything is comes under circular motion only. Try to catch my point. Are you getting my point? The path should, must not be, may not be circle, even though it will comes under circular motion students. Are you understanding? Suppose for example, one object is revolving like this. Is it circular motion? Exactly, exactly circular motion. Why? Because mass object is it. Let me consider axis of rotation is this. Definitely it will come under circular motion. So, I think I hope you are getting my point. What is circular motion? The axis or fixed axis or axis of rotation should not pass through the object. Then it is comes under circular motion students. Okay, fine. So, let me consider what are the things we are going to discuss in the circular motion. One by one we will discuss students. The first thing, the very first thing we have to know First thing is, let me consider, let me treat, this is a circular motion, okay. The path is circle, object is here, after some time the object will move here, after t time. So, it will cover some distance, 
theta angular displacement we will say it will cover some distance dl try to catch my point here students the first thing is we have to find dl or l length of arc length of arc this is nothing but linear displacement we will say linear displacement students please make a note of this linear displacement what do you mean by linear displacement this dl is linear displacement it is denoted by let me consider l or dl whatever you can take l you will feel better okay linear displacement means what the displacement traveled between a point a to b a to b is called this distance may be less or more less or more whatever it may be okay a to b displacement is called as linear displacement students and coming to angular displacement angular displacement that is denoted by theta students see angular displacement is nothing but the angle between initial position to final position is called as angular displacement the si unit of angular displacement is radian radian students you know what is radian and all okay si unit of angular displacement is called as radian okay next this is first point the second point and third point i'll like to tell you right now linear velocity right now very important linear velocity linear velocity means what or else one more name is there for this tangential velocity i will tell you tangential velocity or in some textbook they will say instantaneous velocity also okay fine so let me consider this is what tangent this is what tangent hmm? this is what tangent wherever you may draw tangent it's all shows tangential velocity students at that point at that point so it will represent the tangential velocity at that point try to catch my point fine let, let me answer what is linear velocity or tangential velocity right on the definition the rate of change the rate of change of linear displacement is called as linear velocity suppose for example v is equals to dl by dt that's all dl by dt is the linear velocity students dl by dt okay fine any doubts here and one more thing here what happens to the linear velocity dl by dt is the formula coming for fourth one angular velocity can you guess and tell me what is angular velocity angular velocity is equals to rate of change of it is denoted by omega students so angular velocity always denoted by omega that is rate of change of angular displacement rate of change of angular displacement is called as angular velocity any doubts here so let me go with the angular velocity si unit so omega is equals to d theta by dt so what is the uh, unit of theta radian what is the unit of time second so radian by second is the unit of omega students here i think i hope this all clear for you all right so next i am going for what is the relationship between angular velocity and linear velocity that we will discuss right now relationship between angular velocity and linear velocity so these are the important topics we have to remember so let me consider there is a circle okay fine so object is at point a initially it has reached point b okay fine let me consider theta is an angle made at the center okay fine now what i am going to do is here let me consider the length traveled the length of the arc is l where theta is a angular displacement do you know the formula according to mathematics l value length of the arc formula l is equal to theta by 360 into 2 pi r did you remember students very simple formula theta theta by 360 into 2 pi r x by 360 into 2 pi r so length in a sense what is theta theta only what is 2 pi r so 360 in radians 2 pi remember students in radians 360 degrees it is in degree ma this is in degree if i am taking in radian then 2 pi it will become now again 2 pi into r you let 2 pi 2 pi cancel l is equals to theta into r you will get <laughs> make a note of this students so we got that l is equals to theta into r any doubts up to here any doubts let us do the differentiation with respect to time both like this 
you just write the formula first L is equals to theta into R differentiate differentiate both sides with T then what happens dl by dt is equals to r is constant here na? you can take r outside and d theta by dt you can write see guys here whenever r is constant r is constant how can kind till of so r is constant here but theta is changing l is also changing so that's why r into d theta by dt you will write yes or no so you know already dl by dt is nothing but linear velocity you can check it once check it once already i told you r into d theta by dt is omega so v is equals to r omega so v is a vector r is a vector omega is a vector that's why v bar is equals to r bar cross omega bar we will say this is what cross product students cross products what is that cross product of vectors try to catch my point students v bar is a vector r bar is a vector omega bar is also a vector why r bar is a vector it is a position vector now see guys here here now this is a vector after some time it will be so it has a vector so that is why r bar is a vector omega bar is also a vector v bar is also a vector two vectors are multiplied we got vector then it is called as vector product so that's why we can write v bar is equals to so magnitude of that uh, how can you tell r omega sin theta also we can use the magnitude of v bar is nothing but r omega sin theta also where theta is an angle between tell me students theta is an angle between theta is an angle between r bar and omega bar that's it so these are the things we have to make a note of the students make it fast make it fast any doubts up to here in velocities shall we go for accelerations yeah please concentrate students what how many accelerations we have for the body which is in circular motion those things we are going to see now okay the first acceleration name is tangential acceleration right on students Ta we have got displacements how many types of displacement we have linear displacement angular displacement we got two kinds of velocities so what are they angular velocity linear velocity same way here accelerations we are going to discuss the body which is in circular motion what are the accelerations we have that's what we are discussing tangential acceleration right now tangential acceleration students so at denoted by at okay very simple right now the rate of change of the rate of change of okay linear velocity one more name i have given for this tangential velocity is called as tangential acceleration what is the formula you can write easily dv by dt is the formula for tangential acceleration any doubts on this tangential velocity tangential velocity also you can say already i told you linear velocity or tangential velocity so rate of change of acceleration is called as tangential acceleration second one right on students second one centripetal acceleration before centripetal first you write centripetal acceleration better you can go for before centripetal you can go with the angular acceleration better second one angular acceleration students make a note of this angular acceleration very simple same definition the rate of change of angular velocity right now the rate of change of angular velocity can you tell me what is the uh, i mean uh, tangential sorry angular acceleration it is denoted by alpha students so alpha is equals to d omega by dt d omega by dt so you guys should know very well the si unit of angular velocity angular acceleration is meter by second square as usual but here radian by second square is the Yes, a unit of alpha. Make a note of this. Make a note of this. Shall we go for the next thing? Yeah. Third acceleration. What is the third acceleration? We will see. 
Before going to third acceleration, we should know what is centripetal force and centrifugal force. Okay, fine. Very important concept, right now. Centripetal force and centrifugal force. Let me consider one object is there here. This is the center of the, I mean, axis of the object, which is passing here, axis of the circular motion. So, axis of rotation it is. R is the distance here. If it is revolving itself, then two kinds of forces will be acting here. One is away from the center, one is towards the center. How many types of forces we are acting? I mean, acting on the particle, two types of forces we have. One is F2, away from the, away from the center, away from the center is called a centrifugal force. Write down students, centrifugal force. Towards the center, one more force is acting, that is called as centripetal force, centripetal. Write on this, first force is centripetal force, second force is centrifugal force. This is F2, I mean the centripetal force is towards the center and coming to centrifugal forces away from the center. Guys, you should know one thing, you should know one thing here, it is very important. The centripetal force and centrifugal force both must be same, exactly equal and opposite in direction. Then only the path will be in the circular motion, otherwise somehow it will come this side. If the centripetal force is more, it has to come this side. Nah. So, it will go like this. It is not possible actually. Whenever you are considered that path is a circle, then centripetal force and centrifugal force both must be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Then only it will remain in the fixed path. That you should understand. Okay. Guys, are you getting my point? This is what centripetal force or centrifugal force. Getting my point? Reason here. So, by our mathematical observation or else uh, what is that? By our mechanics, the centripetal force F is equal to write down students. If any of that mass M is revolving around this, the centripetal force is given by write down. Both are same in magnitude. It may be centripetal force, centrifugal force, both are same in magnitude students. That force is equal to mv square by r students. Write down this. mv square by r. Are you getting my point? This is what called a centripetal force. Okay. Are you getting my point? Due to centripetal force, some acceleration we will be getting. That is called as centripetal acceleration. Write down this. The acceleration produced due to centripetal force is called as centripetal acceleration. It is denoted by AC is equals to that we have to find. So, centripetal acceleration AC we will say. So, now we can say according to Newton's second law, F is equal to MA, na, MA is equal to MV square by R. So, MM cancel, then A is equal to V square by R is the formula of centripetal force students. Write down this, make a note of this. V square by R is the formula of centripetal force. Make a note of this students. Okay. Did you finish this? Make a note of this. So, there is a third acceleration we have discussed that is centripetal acceleration centripetal acceleration what is the formula for centripetal acceleration students ac is equals to v square by r okay fine now already we know v is equal to r omega so you can substitute in this formula ac is equals to r omega whole square by r why since v is equals to r omega you can check the formulas so that is nothing but r square omega square by r r r cancel so, R omega square is the centripetal acceleration formula. So, there are two formulas we have. One is V square by R, another one is R omega square. Okay. So, you can write that centripetal force is equals to V square by R is one formula and R omega square is another formula. So, any formula you can use according to the situation. Any doubts in the centripetal acceleration? Any doubts in the centripetal acceleration students? No. Next, we will go for net acceleration net acceleration this is the last topic we are going to discuss the fourth i think first acceleration is what students tell me 
tangential acceleration that is at second acceleration angular acceleration that is alpha third one is called as centripetal acceleration that is ac fourth one is the last one is net acceleration that is a net so what do you mean by net acceleration students very simple so let me consider the particle is in circular motion this is the r radius so after some time it will go here see students the acceleration tangential will act like this the acceleration centripetal will be act like this ac the angle between write down this the angle between the angle between centripetal acceleration and tangential sorry so tangential acceleration and centripetal acceleration is 90 both are perpendicular then what is the net acceleration between these two what is the net acceleration that is called as net acceleration students write down the resultant acceleration of both centripetal and tangential is called a net that is net acceleration can you tell me what is the formula for that a net is equals to square root of ac square plus at square student that's all so these are the different types of acceleration we have discussed in the case of circular motion in two dimensional students the first thing the very first thing what what we have started